Welcome, Tarvin Linkson. Thank you for being here today. Um, yeah, I have some questions from you, for you. Uh, why did you decide to participate in the exhibition Tibet Are Now? Mm, when um, I was invited over here to participate uh, in uh, uh, the exhibition of uh, Tibetan contemporary arts, I, I was very happy, proud and uh, honoured to be able to exhibit some of my works together with uh, some of the pioneers of Tibetan contemporary art outside Tibet. And uh, also because uh, of the painting style I'm painting, the traditional painting style, I do not get a chance to exhibit as often as I would like to. So it was a very good opportunity for me to exhibit these works in this exhibition. Very well. Could you tell us something about the artworks that you are exhibiting? Yeah, I am exhibiting the 21 Taras here. These 21 Taras are according to the tradition of Surya Gupta. And uh, these paintings are all done in the Karmagaji style. And that is one of the uh, styles or schools of painting from Tibet. May I ask you just a detail? How long does it take for you to paint one of these? Kind of mm, it depends on how uh, detailed you want to be. You know? if, it, uh, if you really want to make it uh, very concentrated on all these uh, small details and really make it uh, beautiful, then uh, a thanka like this can take uh, a month over a month. You know? and if you want to make it less detailed, it can take two weeks. So it really depends on how, how really good thankas of quality you want to make. And do you have a special, let's say, link to Tara, if I may ask? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I think uh, uh, all the Tibetans do have uh, some form of link with Tara. She is uh, considered the female Bodhisattva. Huh? And uh, I think uh, every, Tibetans, every Tibetan children from a very young age can just recite the mantras of uh, Chenrezig, Avalokiteshvara, and uh, uh, Green Tara. And uh, if we consider uh, Chenrezig as the national protector of Tibet, you know, then the Tara is the female form, the female protectors of Tibet. Lovely. And um, who are you creating your artwork for? My artwork, I create for individuals uh, who are practicing Buddhism for monasteries, for Buddhist institutes, and uh, these are the three sort of categories of group that I create work for when they ask me to create a special thangka for rituals or for their own practices. And uh, besides that, I also create uh, or make thangkas for the general public, creating the more sort of popular deities. And uh, um, in which way do you think, how does I mean, art made inside Tibet differ from the art created outside Tibet? Is there a difference? Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in let's say, traditional Tanka yeah. painting? In traditional Tanka painting, there is not much difference because uh, um, Tanka painting or Tanka art, everything is predefined. You know, the colors, the forms, the proportions. So there is not much difference. The only difference can be found in different schools or tradition one follows. So um, a thangka, a, a country thangka painter, a Kamagari thangka painter in Tibet, and a Kamagari thangka painter outside Tibet, you know, there's not much difference. Only the differences in schools. This means that when you paint a traditional thangka painting like this Tara, you do not, so let's say, express any of your personal emotions. Um, there's very little room for that. You can, up to some extent, uh, in the, let's say in the, in the form of the clothes, you know, the form of the lotuses, or also in the backgrounds, there is some some sort of uh, freedom. Freedom, yeah. But uh, for the color of a body, for example, and for the attributes that she's having, those are all predefined. There is no room for self-expression. And not even for her uh, 
traits and face? Um, no, generally speaking, no. But you do see some difference, I, but I think that's more to do with uh, how one has uh, studied I see. the art than, than being an expression of uh, the artist himself. I understand. Okay. Now, considering the title of the exhibition, Tibet Art Now on the Threshold of a New Future, do you consider yourself an optimist? Mm, yes, I do. Concerning um, traditional Thangka painting, I think as long as there's interest in Tibetan Buddhism, um, I'm sure there's going to be interest in uh, Thangka painting also because it's uh, inseparable, the two of them. Um, concerning uh, contemporary art, it's, it's uh, difficult to say, but I, but I am optimist because uh, depends largely on the younger generations of Tibetans now. Don't know very much about the older generations. Maybe they they don't see any <laughs> thing in it. But I think the younger generations, uh, if they are because they are exposed more and more to Western uh, culture, to Western society and art, I think they can get a better understanding of what contemporary art is. And I think it does have a very good future. Good. <coughs> Sorry. Do you have a message for the youngest generation of Tibetans? In general, not only about art. In general, in general. yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, whatever they are, f uh, how do you call it? Whatever they are studying to become, whatever they be it an artist, or be it an, uh, you know, a doctor, a physician, uh, anything, engineers, anything. I think it's very important to complete the study and master one thing. I think a lot of uh, young Tibetans, uh, they, after some schooling, they start dropping out and then they start going to do business or in family business and things like that. So I would like to see more uh, professionals that are that have mastered one profession completely, you know, whether it's in art or any other field. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.